Hello and welcome everybody to my Pro Tools tutorial. This tutorial is really a very beginner's type tutorial and it's basically just kind of about workflow and organization. I see some really bad organization with new guys and with guys who have been using Pro Tools for a couple of years. So I thought I'd just kind of touch up on it as somebody who gets sessions from uh, people who been, you know, other engineers and, and they end up giving me a hard drive or a session that's somewhat of a disaster as far as organization. And I just want to go through a couple of those and, and discuss that. First of all, hard drive. The importance of organizing your hard drive is is pretty pretty great, I think. First, I've get I get hard drives in from people who have everything on the top layer of their hard drive. They'll have their sessions, they'll have audio files, they'll have songs within songs, and it's it's really a mess. And and it's very disorganized, and it's very hard to kind of figure out where everything is. So just an example, I'll show you my hard drive for my studio here. I have I don't have a lot of stuff in here, and I try to keep it as plain as possible. If I finish up a session, I'll usually keep it on my top hard drive, my work hard drive, for maybe a couple of months, and then I'll probably get rid of it. But before I do that, I've got it completely backed up probably two or three times, and I'll go over that in a second. But looking at my hard drive here, you see I have a folder for every client or project that I've worked on. Um, this here is just an example. We'll go into this one. Here, I don't even have songs inside that folder. I actually have the projects separated. So I have the client, and then I actually have some different projects at different times in a separate folder. And those are labeled pretty detailed, so I know exactly what it is. Going into that folder, and you actually see, I actually do, at that point, have the Pro Tools sessions and the songs within that folder. And those are organized as well. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll put a bounce folder in there for rough mixes when I'm going along. Uh, I may even have a, a folder in there for things that I may export or import, uh, sound files or things of that nature, just so I keep them separated and organized. Also, if you'll notice, I have a final mixes folder. Uh, sometimes I'll have folders within that where it might have like 16-bit or 24-bit folders or MP3s. Uh, sometimes I'll put a rough mix folder on in here as well. So you see that I have everything pretty well organized and detailed so I know exactly where the stuff is when I go into it later or if somebody else has the hard drive to do a mix or mastering they know exactly what's going on as well. So enough of that let me talk uh, real quickly about backing up. If you're not backing up your stuff every night you need to. At some point a hard drive is going to take a dump on you and you're going to hate yourself and your clients are going to hate you and you're going to end up doing a bunch of work over again that you've already done and you're going to hate yourself because you're doing it short end of the story is you're gonna hate yourself if a hard drive goes down and it's not backed up we've all done it you're gonna do it but try to not do it and the best way to do that is you're gonna need more than one hard drive obviously I have a couple of different hard drives I have some external hard drives but I also have an internal hard drive on my Apple computer that I have time machine hooked up to time machine is really great it ran it doesn't randomly do it it backs it up as you're actually working and it just backs up stuff uh, that it sees has changed or has been added to the hard drive. It's very, very fantastic, and I can't tell you how much that I love it. So my recommendation, in my particular case, I ended up buying a 2 terabyte internal hard drive. I put it in my Apple computer, and then I used that with Time Machine to back up my external drives. And I also have an external hard drive that I use as a backup during... Um, which after I re do a project I'll put it on that hard drive as a redundant backup and then I also make my clients come in uh, with a hard drive and I make them take a copy of it home they paid for it they may as well as have a copy of it as well they're just you know hard drives are just like the old two inch tapes of the day you want your clients to take it you want it backed up in the studio as well so enough on backups, let's go real quickly. We're going to talk about organization within the session itself. Now I have a quick session here I can just go into that's blank. First thing is uh, let's create some new tracks. Now first of all you want your, your session to be labeled according to whatever song or project you're working on. So you'll know exactly what you are working on. You don't know how many times, it sounds silly, but you don't know how many times that I've gotten uh, projects from people on a hard drive that 
don't have song labels, they just say something weird and random. So let's create a few tracks. I got four tracks here I created. And let's say I'm going to be tracking some drums. So let's go ahead and label these. You don't know how many times people send give me sessions that aren't labeled. The tracks aren't labeled. They're labeled audio one, audio two, audio as the default labeling. It's it's really annoying. It's uh, and it's very disorganized. I have no idea what stuff is. I you know I have to figure it out. They don't know. It's I, I don't understand it. But it's something. The first thing you should do when you start a new session or open up a new track. Uh, is label your tracks. In this case, I'm let's label four drum tracks. And in this case, I got kick. I'm gonna label it kick 01. Next track, we're gonna label snare 01. Next track, let's label hat 01. Next, let's say tom 01. I'm only gonna do four tracks just to keep things quick and simple here. All right, so now I have my uh, my drum tracks. Let's go ahead and group those. Label your group as drums. There, now everything's working as a group. Okay, quickly just for my own OCD, I'm going to go ahead and label those all the same color. You'll notice, and you're probably asking yourself, why did he label that kick 01? You don't have to. You can just label it kick if you want. I found, and I'll show you in a second, that labeling it kick 01 is going to be great because I'm going to do more than one take of a kick uh, or, uh, of drums. So, when I do a take, so let's say I go ahead and I'm recording drums, okay, I end up recording, that's great. So I've got my take that I've done, I'm going to want to do another take, I'm going to go to new in the playlist. And what's it do? It automatically labels it as kick 02. Do another, a new one, if I'm going to do another take and it labels it as kick 03. Now I go into the playlist later if I want to comp or listen to other all the takes. They're very well organized as 01, 02, 03. Now if I would have labeled this just kick, let me just delete all, uh, undo all that. Now if I would have labeled it just kick and just snare, and I would have went to a new playlist, it's going to put the dot .01 after it. So then when I go into the playlist, I have kick, and then I have kick 01. So really, your first take was just playing kick. Your second take was kick 02. Slightly confusing, a little disorganized. Don't like it. So I'm going to go back to the kick 01, snare 01. That way, when I do create new playlists to do other takes, they're very well organized exactly to which take it corresponds to. The benefit of doing this as well, let's say I've got my three playlists, my three takes of drums that I did. I take this, after the drummer leaves, I'm going to do some editing, some comping. I can go through, I'm going to be like, okay, here's my three takes. I want to create a new playlist in, for the comp track. So I'm going to end up taking, I'm going to end up going to new playlist, and then I'm going to label this as kick parentheses C as a comp track. That way I know where I'm going to end up comping my tracks to. So after that is done, I now have the three takes that I've recorded as dot oh one, oh two, and oh three, and then I have a brand new playlist labeled as parentheses C. What I'm going to do is I'm going to end up listening to each take. I'll probably take pieces and bars from each one, copy them, and then paste them into this comp playlist. That's going to keep things organized, and I don't have to go. I still have all my original three takes to go back to if I need to. After I've completely comped it, I'm going to want to edit it probably in, in Beat Detective. So then I'm going to. I'll be on my comp track. I'm going to create a duplicate playlist of my comp track. And then I'm going to relabel that. As you can see, it labeled it as parentheses C, and then it put a dot one behind those tracks. I don't want that. I'm going to do a dot parentheses E behind the dot parentheses C. This is going to tell me, quite simply, that this is now my edited playlist from the comp track. 
and then on that playlist is the one I'm going to be doing all my edits on. Now after I'm done doing Beat Detective or any other editing that I want to do on that playlist, I'm going to have a billion edits going on and I'm going to want to get rid of those. So I'm going to want to consolidate my edit tracks. But I don't want to consolidate all my edits and not have them because in case I miss something or I need to change something, I don't I, I want to have those edits to go back to if I need them. So then I'm going to duplicate this edited track on another playlist. And at this point I'm going to have a dot parentheses C, dot parentheses E, and then it put again a dot O1. I don't want the dot O1 because I really don't know what that means. So I'm going to do a dot parentheses con. Now this is going to say, and I've got a lot of parentheses, I've got a lot of things going on here, but it's really simple and it's really organized and it ends up working out really well, at least for me. And I think it's a lot better for uh, most people as well. So now I've got kick dot parentheses C dot parentheses E dot parentheses con. Now that contract means consolidated. So I'm going to take, I'm going to end up highlighting the entire uh, drum tracks that I've edited. And then I'm going to go into consolidate and consolidate that playlist, which is down here under edit. And it's also the shortcut is option shift three. Then you're going to have, that way you're working on a completely consolidated full regions uh, to work with in Pro Tools. It's very or it's a great way to organize your drums and anytime you're doing in labeling your tracks you should be as detailed as possible without making the the length of the uh, labels too long. In this case I just got kicked but if you're doing a vocal part you know you want to be detailed. I rarely use the comments but it's also a good way to keep things organized. So I think that's it with uh, my lesson on, on workflow environment. So hopefully this helps and thanks for watching.